and uh, we're going to sing the Lord's my shepherd. I will trust, I will trust in you alone. Father God, we have been focusing on just how great you are. And Father, as we think about the things that we've been sharing today, we just thank you for all the good things that we hear about. For Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you give each one of us. For you are indeed a great God. And Lord, as we think of those blessings, we just thank you for the joy that we have of bringing our gifts to you now. And Father, we pray that you will use these gifts. We pray particularly for our uh, church treasurer, Roy, and his team in the responsibility for using these gifts. Father, help them, we pray. But our prayer is that others may come to know you, to hear the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that they will come and have a living faith in you, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Um, at, at the back of the church, you'll find um, some of these leaflets. Um, these are from Care for the Family, um, Engage, and it's, it's about finding how, how your church can engage with the community. Um, obviously, we, we do that quite a lot as a church with our community project, but I've just thought there might be some people here wondering, well, how can I get involved? How, how does it all work? How does it fit in the, the community and, and the project and, and the church? And um, I, I think this will be a really great thing to, to go and to find out more about. So I think they're they're at the back, is that right, in the, in the fire area, if you're interested in that. And it's later on in November in London. So, um, and there's a good um, lineup of, of speakers there as well. We're going to have our reading now. I'm going to invite um, Jane, that's right, Jane's coming out to, um, to read. And it's from Luke chapter 9. Luke 9, verse 28 to 36. This is 
headed the Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They, sto they spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. And as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. And while he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. And the disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. Lord Jesus, we, we thank you that you are the, the bread of life, that you are and the living wood. And we pray that you'd come and that you'd speak that fresh word into our lives. Lord, that you'd transform us into your image. Lord, we pray that you'd just prepare our, our hearts now to hear from your word. Amen. It's one of those um, everyday run-of-the-mill kind of stories, isn't it? Um, kind of thing that happens to, to most of us, well, maybe every week, if not, if not daily. Is that right? No, no. Um, if you want to follow, um, yeah, make sure you keep your Bibles open and then you can follow in it. It's Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 28. And uh, we're just going to walk through the story together. And um, we've been um, looking through uh, the, the story of Jesus in the book of Luke um, since the beginning of the year, I guess. And... Um, yeah, and it's quite, quite interesting, isn't it, the different stories that, that, that pop out. And um, we, we join Luke's story here. Just after Jesus has announced his pending death, uh, if you just look just before in verse 22, he says to his disciples, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. So Jesus has just announced his pending death death. He also has just announced that following him, if, if his followers, if his disciples really want to follow him, then it demands a radical change of life, a, a radical change of perspective. If you look at verse 23 and 24, he says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me will save it. So a disciple's life, a, a follower's life, a, a, one of Jesus' apprentices' life is different from the world's life around them. And it's different from what the world expects their lives to be. Let me say that again, because that really struck me as I, as, as I was looking at this this week. A disciple's life is different from what the world expects God's people to, to have, to live. And that quite struck me. Sometimes I wonder if we live up to what we think the world expects us to be rather than living to what Jesus wants us to be. Anyway, it's eight days later. I wonder why there's that gap of eight days there. I, I wonder if they were given time to just digest what Jesus has been saying. It was quite big things, wasn't it? His death and, and what was demanded of them. Maybe it was to consider if they really had the resolve to follow him, even if it meant 